2016 is a presidential year, and as you would expect, candidates from across the aisle are talking about public policy. Joining me now to talk about national public policy as it relates to retirement plans is the president of Empower Retirement, Mr. Ed Murphy. Ed, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you, Jeff. Pleasure to be here. You, you mentioned in your remarks about the DOL fiduciary rules, and this is really for the first time since their passage in 74, um, you know, a dramatic change to the fiduciary rules. This is going to have an impact in, in Empower Retirement's business, most certainly. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could you know, give the audience your perspective on these new rules. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think that um, I know I speak for all my colleagues at Empower and many of my colleagues in the industry. Um, none of us want a situation where we're giving, con we or uh, other related parties are giving conflicted advice. Um, so there needs to be the right level of transparency, there needs to be the right level of disclosures. And I think there's more that we could do in that regard that is to some degree is captured in the, in the preliminary rule. We don't have the final rule yet as you know. Um, where I have concerns, and this was the basis of my testimony before the DOL, is at a time when more and more Americans need information and advice, my concern is the way the rule is currently written it would lead to a more restrictive advice environment, and therefore those that need it most would be least likely to get it. And uh, that's a concern. Um, I'll give you an example. We take over four million phone calls a year at Empower. People are asking us for information. It might be, I just left my employer, I'm not sure what I should do with my money. Um, we, we give unconflicted un information uh, in the sense that we just, provide them with the facts and with the information so that they can make the best decision. And um, the way the rule's currently written, um, it's fairly broad. And our concern it was, is it would restrict us from having those conversations. And we know that if those conversations don't occur, it leads to a higher preponderance of cash outs where people are taking the money out of their plan, they're paying the penalty, they're paying the taxes. And that's something we obviously want to avoid. So, uh, again, I think there are elements of the rule that are directionally right, uh, but uh, until we see the final rule, we don't really know what the implications are to our business or how we're going to interact with our customers. It's those unintended consequences that you really have to be on the on the on the lookout for, yes. right? I mean, you may mention this in your, your comments earlier that there are small advisory firms that would see high compliance costs as a result of these changes that potentially are doing a lot of good. That's right. Um, working with individuals that may not get a level of service from a, a, a larger firm because they have small account balances. So to drive those people out of this, um, out of this business simply by raising the compliance costs may um, detract from achieving the goal, the end goal, which is retirement security. So I think, that's right. yeah, I think it's a balanced act. And I share, I think we share your, echo your sentiments in that it's, it's a balancing act. And I, I'll use the example of uh, the fee disclosure rules. We had fee disclosure rules in 2012 come to fruition. Again, those were high costs in terms of uh, systematic expenses by organizations like yours to, to be able to prepare the, the paperwork and send it mm -hmm. out. Um, but the, the net result, what was the net result? Do people actually look at the document they, they received and was the information 100% meaningful? So I, think, and so I think there's a lot to be um, said about having a role. The purpose makes sense, but it's, it's being practical in how you implement it. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we did a few years ago, uh, which I think at the time was unique in the market, is we actually disclosed the fees online. So uh, we would update that fee schedule every month, both for the individual participant as well as the plan sponsor. So they had access to that information. They could see the breakdown of the expenses. Obviously, that went beyond what the DOL yeah. requires. They require a written notification once a year. Um, we felt to be, it would, the right thing to do, to do was to be transparent about it, and so we went through this process of putting it out there and making it available to them on demand. And, and to be fair, it is challenging to write rules for an industry that is that is serving 90 million participants. I mean, so I want to be fair to the folks at, at labor and other regulatory entities in, in that respect. Ed, really appreciate your time. And hopefully, you know, 2016, this is a great you know, beginning of the year. Maybe we get some uh, some of the candidates, uh, policy advisors on the show as well. That Ed, would be a great idea. And Murphy, Excellent. thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Jeff. Appreciate it.